So welcome uh, everybody, anybody who's um, joining us, ACS and Simulate this morning um, to see our presentation on how to optimize your security controls in, in minutes. Um, the, it is being recorded, so it will appear on our website uh, shortly after we finish this this morning. So uh, if you want to re-look at it, it, uh, it will be available. Um, I'm going to shortly hand over to Tim, who's going to run through the presentation. If you've got any questions, um, I'm sure everybody knows how to um, use, use all these different tools that we've been getting used to since we've had lockdown, but please put your messages in the chat and we'll try and get the, to them at the end. Um, I'll come back at the end and, uh, and just finish off. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Tim and he can run us through the presentation. All yours, Tim. Thanks very much, Aid, and good morning, everyone. Thanks for taking time out of your days to join us this morning. So my name is Tim Ager, and I work for Simulate here in the UK. Uh, we're going to talk uh, uh, briefly this morning about breach and attack simulation and, and really how uh, proactive security control testing can help you to assess uh, the state of your security uh, controls, the state of your security, the state of your risk, really, as a business. So just to start um, a little bit about uh, what we do and, and how we do it. So Simulate is, a, is an Israeli uh, cybersecurity business. Um, we provide a primarily a SaaS based platform that enables our customers to launch many, many thousands of simulated cyber attacks against their organization for the specific purpose of seeing how well they could defend themselves against those types of exploits. There's really three elements to how the platform works. Um, and I'm just going to stay on this slide for a brief while just to explain that in a bit more detail. So, so primarily what the platform is designed to do is give you the ability to launch those, simu those simulated attacks across the whole kill chain. So what does that mean? It allows you basically to test everything from how effective your email gateway is working in blocking things like ransomware coming into the organization. How well things like your endpoint security, your antivirus, your EDR tools are, are doing at uh, blocking malware from installing and running within the organization, all the way through to identifying whether data of value could actually be successfully exfiltrated or stolen from the business. Once you've done that, once you've run the process of running these uh, assessments against your security controls, the platform generates a risk score. That risk score is really, really important because it is going to give you the ability to quantify and be able to articulate, I guess, how effective your controls are actually working. The score is always out of 100. And the idea is that over time, you bring that risk score down to demonstrate the improvements you're making to your business. The second element of using the platform is all about remediation and, and mitigation. So the platform doesn't just tell you that, uh, your security controls are working good, bad, or indifferently, it's also going to give you mitigation advice. So it's going to show you these are the types of exploits that were successfully delivered or executed in your business. And this is more importantly is what you can do about it. So by dealing with the remediation advice, we give you the ability to tighten your security controls to improve your configurations. That's important because you now have the ability to go back to square one again, run your or rerun an assessment and if you've carried out the mitigation advice effectively you should see that risk score start to come down that's all important because in the third phase of using the platform it's all about reporting so the platform gives you some very very nice plain language reports that give you the ability to articulate contextualize conceptualize uh, really explain to a board or to a management team this is what security looks like within our business. This is what we're exposed to. This is where we're doing well. And now giving you the ability to make some proactive decisions about what you do moving forward with your security strategy. That's obviously something in the, the, the traditional sense that's very hard to do is articulate and be very clear on how effective cybersecurity works within a business. So I've touched on this already, but ultimately three steps using the platform, run the simulations, evaluate the, the results, carry out the remediation, and then step and repeat that on a frequency of your choosing. Ultimately, this is going to be really relevant to you if you have any of these sorts of questions that you struggle to answer or that you'd like to answer. But primarily, if I was to ask 
everyone on the call today how secure your company is today, how would you be able to answer that question? Typically, cybersecurity has been a very reactive practice. Uh, we wait, or we don't wait to be breached, but we, if we get breached, then purse strings loosen and we, we fix those problems. Or typically, we run a, an annual penetration test. Very, very important thing to do. But we're then really building a 12-month security strategy based on a report that was carried out over a couple of days uh, several months ago. Is that telling you that you're secure right now? And if you were to be asked that question today, how would your answer differ from four months ago before lockdown? Uh, are your remote workers uh, as secure as they would be if they're in the office? How do you know? How do you validate that? As as associated to that, how do you measure your security controls? If you're looking to replace or renew your current antivirus solution or your email gateway, how do you go through the process of choosing the best solution that meets your requirements? Do you even need to replace your current solution? How do you know unless you have a way of measuring the security controls that you have and those tools that you might want to have? Do you know where your vulnerabilities are, your most critical vulnerabilities? You know, running vulnerability scanning, again, is a really important um, foundation of running effective cybersecurity programs. The vulnerability scanning tells you these are the vulnerabilities or CVEs that you have uh, on devices in your network. Do you know if they can be exploited? Do you know how immediately they could be exploited? If not, then that vulnerability scanning information is lacking somewhat in context. Can you deal with the most uh, sort of the latest emerging threats? So things like the Soden Akibi ransomware that caused Travelex problems or the snake malware that targeted or caused issues for Honda. Uh, are you currently facing issues with uh, the maze ransomware? Um, do you face challenges with the huge increase in COVID-19 and Black Lives Matter based clickbait and phishing emails? If so, how do you block those things? How do you defend against those things that are coming out on a daily basis? And then you have considerations over the more uh, challenging considerations, I guess, which is about resourcing, time, budgets, how do you know where best to allocate your resources if you don't know what's working effectively and what's not working so well in the organization? How do you demonstrate budget for cybersecurity spend? It's typically very challenging in the, in the, in the best of times, but trying to demonstrate uh, best security, best return on investment is a very difficult thing to do unless you can prove it. And also how do you demonstrate compliance with regulations? Uh, most regulations don't tell you that you have to do a prescriptive list of things. They tell you that if you don't take necessary measures to defend yourselves, then if you do get breached, you're going to have some problems in, in explaining that away. So most compliance guidelines are really asking you to be able to demonstrate the improvements you've made since the last audit point to, to improve your security. If you can't quantify that, how can you uh, comply with those regulations? So these and many other questions can be addressed by the use or the effective use of tools such as breach and attack simulation. Now, there are many ways that people already uh, address these challenges, pen testing being one of those, red teaming being a, a more expensive consideration around that. If you're large enough to run red teaming, um, then you'll know exactly how expensive it is and how onerous it is to actually plan and prepare for those types of activities. These are solutions that have a place, they are valid, they're important. Most regulatory guidelines expect you as an organization to have a third party check your homework, so to speak. But the challenge with pen testing is really to snapshot in time. It's limited in scope. I don't know many organizations that pen test their entire security infrastructure every single time. So it's limited by scope, it's limited by time, it's limited by budget, and it's limited by the skills of the person doing it. Ultimately, you're waiting some time thereafter for a report and that report really is limited as well. And it's giving you advice based on one engagement uh, in one time of the year. So it's not really giving you up to date and meaningful information that you can use whenever you need to. Why is that important? I'm not going to go through all of this detail, but on the left hand side of the screen, the quotation from Gartner is quite important. I think most people have a, a view that if they buy the, the, the best of breed security products, they're going to be safe. But in reality, it's like anything else in life. Um, if you don't take the necessary time to use the tools you have, the tools are very ineffective. So that's why it's about operational effectiveness. It's great buying best of breed products, but unless someone is configuring them to meet the requirements of your business, 
they are they are arguably no better or worse than any other solution on the market so by assessing your security control effectiveness you're not necessarily identifying brand a is better than brand b what you're actually identifying is is the tool working effectively in your business and if not what do you need to configure to make it work better for you how do we do that? Um, so Simulate is designed to be very, very quick and easy to, to get up and running. I know everyone says that, but uh, having worked in cybersecurity for 20 years myself, I can validate really that this is one of those solutions that delivers on the promise. And there's a couple of reasons why. The first is this is primarily a SaaS based solution. So all of the configuring of the assessments, all of the reporting and management is all uh, in, the, in the cloud. On your network side, it's really as simple as having a single target PC enabled to run our agent. That's it. You don't need to have server side infrastructure. You do not need to have agents running on every single device. We do not cause disruption to your day to day users. The testing logic is quite simple. If we are testing a single target device that is governed by your, or your corporate or your organizational security controls, then logically, if we can get malicious emails to land in that test inbox, if we could install malware or run malicious behaviors from that uh, endpoint, if we can move laterally from that device or steal data from it as a conduit back to the internet, we should be able to do any of those things from any device that meets the same profile. So by testing one, you're testing many, so it's very rapid to see where your exposure is. The platform can run in a fully automated fashion. So if you are concerned about onboarding any new uh, cyber technologies uh, because of the amount of time it takes to learn how to use them and get value from them, that's uh, something we take you know, obviously very seriously. So every single module that you have the ability to test in our platform comes with a range of automated templates built in. So you can just select the template that you're concerned about, select the frequency, and I wouldn't say forget about it, but you can then, then get alerts when assessments have run. And then you can get down to the most important work, which is deciding what to do with the output. That said, the platform is extremely flexible. So if you are in a, in a vertical or in a business that's heavily targeted, if you are concerned about advanced persistent threats, uh, whatever it may be, uh, you do have the ability to build and customize your own attacks, be that something as simple as building and customizing your own phishing exploit or simulation, all the way through to building your own end-to-end -end advanced persistent threat. So very granular if you wish to go down that route. The results are available immediately. You run the assessment and as soon as it's completed, you are immediately getting into the, the remediation information and making decisions on what to do to improve your controls. And as for the comprehensive coverage, we would always refer to this, which is a depiction of what's typically known in the industry as the kill chain. It's a really awful uh, naming convention, I think, the kill chain. But uh, basically, it follows the life cycle of an advanced persistent threat. And the important element on this slide really is those seven circles that you see. Because those seven circles are really touch points within a cyber attack on an organization. We're all familiar that you know 75 percent plus of exploits start with an inbound email so everyone's familiar with email as a touch point when people are trying to do nasty things to your business but your web gateway is also a front door really into the organization and out from the organization to the internet so it also poses some risks if it's not configured effectively increasingly web application security is important everyone's moving to the cloud everyone's using third-party hosting companies to host their web applications those organizations also provide levels of security around that in, in the form of web application firewalls. But have they been configured effectively? And how would you ever find out? Everyone's also familiar with social engineering because everyone's familiar with phishing. It's a huge issue that everyone talks about on pretty much every single call that I join. Um, and yet it's something that is relatively easy to defend against uh, through both user awareness, but also technology. The end point, the end point really is the beachhead into your organization. If you are not investing in the latest endpoint detection solutions, then ultimately your endpoints are, are going to be your weakest link because at some stage, something's going to come through a gateway somewhere or a user is going to install something uh, and then you potentially have some very serious problems because the end point is no longer just the, 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 the end of the attack. It's very much the start of the attack from your end point. The, uh, the attackers want to see what, where they can go, what they can do. And that really leads into lateral movement. So, you know, if, if we've got into your organization, where could we go? What could we find of value? Really, really scary for organizations of all sizes, but also very challenging to defend against because the answers to lateral movement can be very, very low cost 
but they can scale up to multiple millions of pounds. And then data exfiltration. There's no point breaking into your house if we can't then steal something of value. The attack is, is limited in its effectiveness. And the same, of course, applies to cybersecurity. Once a, a, a malicious insider or a, um, a, an attacker using malware to move laterally, once they've got in and can move around, they need to be able to find something of value and try and exfiltrate it before it's actually a really successful breach. So those seven circles are where there are touch points and therefore they're where customers or customers or organizations of any size really have elements of security controls. Maybe not everything is covered depending on the, the security maturity within the business, but these are the areas that we will all be striving to, to lock down and control over time. So how does Simulate help you address that and validate the effectiveness of your controls? The answer is quite simply in a modular fashion. So those seven circles on the screen now uh, tie into those seven touch points, those seven security controls you may or may not have. But these are also modules of our platform. The real benefit there is a commercial one in that if you only are concerned about your email security and your endpoint security, you can just choose those two modules and just test those two security controls. If you are concerned about inside a threat and lateral movement, then you can choose the network side controls. It's very much down to you and customizable to, to meet your requirements. You're not paying over the odds for everything you won't use. So how does it work? Uh, so from left to right, uh, in very simple terms, the email assessment gives you the ability to simulate up to about 16,000 simulated email exploits. That's things like ransomware that we're familiar with, office payloads, uh, Trojans, worms, uh, things like that. The system in the cloud or our service in the cloud will launch those emails at that target inbox in your network. And the simulate agent on that device basically has a couple of email rules that will say to you, say, if emails from the Simulate service land in this inbox, auto forward a response to the Simulate web service. And that's how our platform knows which exploits can successfully breach your, your email gateway. The web gateway test gives you the ability to simulate a user internal on your network attempting to go out to the internet and reach a known bad website. That's a website associated with ransomware, with phishing, with command and control. Now that may be a user going to a malicious site on purpose, but quite likely it will be a user going out to a website which has been um, compromised, so they, they are inadvertently reaching that site without knowing about it. Once we've identified whether users can reach known bad websites, we also have the ability to simulate a command and control server responding back to that workstation via your web gateway or your firewall. Uh, to see whether a malicious payload could be delivered back into that workstation. So this is an inbound and outbound test of your web gateway or your firewall. This will typically identify uh, misconfigurations or lack of configurations such as uh, SSL inspection or HTTPS inspection not being enabled at your gateway. Web application firewall testing gives you the ability to test whether the web application firewalls defending your web apps are blocking from what's known as the OWASP top 10 payloads. These are attacks we'll all, all be uh, relatively familiar with, things like SQL injection attacks, cross-site scripting attacks, attacks that are designed to expose sensitive data. Phishing awareness, I think everyone's familiar with, so I'm not gonna labor the point with that. We do have a phishing awareness module, but it, it differs really from the traditional phishing awareness tools out there in that we give you the ability to build, customize, send and report on phishing simulations but we don't provide ongoing user awareness. That's not really our, our, our forte. Our view on phishing is it's all about context. If you're gonna fish your organization and you have a, an avid fisherman in your finance department, you have Jim in finance, for example, and the last two phishing simulations, Jim's clicked on the, those emails, then you can certainly uh, do some great things with Jim in terms of education and awareness. But based on Jim's role within the company, Jim may be targeted with some very sophisticated uh, blended attacks that may look very, very legitimate. Jim may not be that IT savvy. Jim may not necessarily care about uh, the emails that come into his inbox because it's work and not his home life. There's many challenges with Jim as an individual. So educating Jim is important, but would you also like to know what the potential impact of that phishing attack would be um, to then make decisions around what security you wrap around your users to make sure that, that even if they do something bad or uh, inadvertently, um, that there's no harm done to the organization. 
if you are interested in that, then that's where Simulate comes in because once you've identified your, your keen fisherman out there, you can then uh, run a, a test of the endpoint security. And the endpoint security module will give you the ability to do two things. The first thing it will give you the ability to do is identify whether malicious payloads uh, can install on the endpoint. So can malware hashes and signatures physically install on your endpoint? So it's gonna test your antivirus capabilities. The second thing it will do is give you the ability to simulate malicious behaviors running on the endpoint. That's gonna be things like, is it possible for malware to elevate its privileges? Uh, to move laterally, to evade our defences. At this point, you are building what I would class as a blast radius. The bomb has gone off. The starting point for that is Jim in finance. What can happen after that? How far does the, de the debris kind of uh, spread? That leads on to lateral movement. If lateral movement is a concern to your organisation, if you've had a penetration test and it's come back saying you need to look at privileged access abuse, the answer to privileged access management is not trivial, it's not simple, and there's many solutions to it. Would you like to know which of those is the best for your organization based on what you're exposed to? If yes, then you could probably save yourself some money and some a lot of time in choosing the relevant solution for you. Lateral movements uh, simulation gives you the ability to use our agent to act like a worm, which will then propagate across your network, but it's entirely safe. It doesn't blue screen devices or lock people out of their accounts. It's going to move, run in memory, move and propagate, and then report back its location to the master agent. And by doing so, it's going to give you an actual network topology of all of the workstations, servers, databases, network segments that we're able to spread to. So if network segmentation is a project that you're looking at, or you already have network segmentation, but you don't know how effective it is, it's a great way of making sure that that, that network segment over there, for example, is fully locked down and nothing genuinely can get through to it. And then finally, data exfiltration gives you the ability to simulate data of value in your organization leaving the business. Whether that's something that's templated like PCI or PII data, or whether you have data classification rules and uh, any file with the phrase top secret shouldn't leave the internal network, you can build dummy files with sample information, so not using live data, of course, um, and then you can attempt to exfiltrate that using email, copying to a USB device, uh, copying to an online collab collaboration tool like Slack or OneDrive or Google Drive. So seven core modules, each of them is modular. Uh, you can choose them individually, run them individually. They will all give you an individual risk score for each of those controls. The remediation advice to then tighten your controls and the ability to run regular retests to make sure you're continuously driving down that risk score. We do offer one other module called immediate threats, which is quite important because all of these modules on the screen now deal with what I would class as known exploits, known threats. But with immediate threats, that's where we do proactive threat hunting on a 24-7 on basis. So when we see new exploits like Soda Nikibi, like Maze, like Snake, uh, we are uploading a version of those to our platform whenever they're released uh, globally. Uh, and our customers have the ability then to test their controls in real time to see whether they're defending against it. That's important if someone comes to you and says, oh, I've just seen this news article about TravelX, or I've just seen this come through on our BBC website. There's a new uh, Black Lives Matter ransomware using Maze. How are we safe? If you get asked that question, uh, how easy is it to answer it? One of the things that happened with WannaCry, which I appreciate is a very old fashioned example now, I'm, I'm not, I've never been so interested about what WannaCry did. I was really interested in when it hit most corporations in the UK. Mo most companies started dealing with, with, with WannaCry about three o'clock on a Friday afternoon. So if someone at a board level comes to the IT department and says, hi guys, I've just seen this, are we safe? What's your process for identifying it? How long does it take and what's your exposure? So the immediate threats module gives you the ability to test those things in real time. Final thing to mention, and I, I, what I'd like to do then is give you a workflow of how the platform actually uses, is used and what the output looks like. This is all um, available on our website. You can actually go to the, uh, the free trial link at the top of the screen there, um, and you can actually register for a free of charge uh, evaluation. It's a, a genuine free trial. No, no salesperson will call. It's, uh, it's all designed to be very, very hands off from our side. Um, and it's going to give you the ability basically to test uh, certainly cut down versions of our of our tool, 
but it will give you the ability for up to two weeks to test your email gateway security, your web gateway security, phishing and your web application firewalls. So very much giving you a flavor of how you're, you're going to defend against things coming into the organization. That's really important or more important now than ever, I would say, because depending on which news site you read and which statistics scare you the most, um, there has been huge increases in COVID-19 and, and now added to that Black Lives Matter uh, campaigns, really using those very important news stories as clickbait, getting people to click on phishing content or ransomware emails, uh, you know, really nasty kind of stuff, but ultimately leveraging people's concerns to do nasty stuff. So with the increase in that malware co combining with everyone working from home, it's a, it's a perfect storm. So testing those controls now, extremely important. Um, at that point, um, I would like to just, just show you a very, very brief demo. Uh, we're not gonna go into any real detail today, but this is one of those tools that really, really does um, uh, cements uh, very clearly how it works with a very brief overview. Um, and to do that, I want to just talk to you through, talk you through really uh, the, the email gateway test. Um, and what I'm going to do is show you how to run the assessment, what remediation uh, output looks like and what a report looks like. So you see the workflow. Every module is run in pretty much the same way. So when you know how to use one, the others are very, very uh, simple to, 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 to use thereafter. So what we have on the screen now uh, is the uh, the master sort of admin dashboard, basically split into three areas. On the right hand side, uh, we're not going to go into where it says as a tax trace. This is basically a, a status area. So when you're running assessments, you are going to see how far through the, the, the tests are. Uh, you're going to have the ability to stop the tests if you're concerned about them. And you have the ability to do some basic interactions with them as well. So uh, you can actually open up a new console window and see the exploits running live through the system as, as they're running. In the middle of the screen, most of the real estate is handed over to these, uh, these uh, I guess, these layers of the onion. So this is another depiction, I guess, of the, um, of the kill chain. These are the individual security controls that you may have as an organization. And in the middle of each circle, you have a risk score. That's the risk score I alluded, I alluded to early in the presentation. It's benchmarked against a number of industry frameworks. So it's quantifiable, it's referenceable, and it's consistent. It is not an arbitrary simulate score to scare you into spending money. Uh, this is designed to give you meaningful and quantifiable output. The, the scores out of 100 are also traffic lighted. So a score that's red is too high. Scores in amber are kind of like in an average kind of level. And if there were scores in green, they, they'd be like the, at the low end of the, of the risk profile. You'll also notice some of these circles are color coded. Those uh, color coded circles relate to system alerts, which I'm now scrolling down here. Typically, the kind of rhubarb and custard sort of color ones uh, are relating to immediate threat alerts. These are things that we're identifying in real time and uploading to the platform. Um, so it's letting you know, basically, these would be targeting your organization via the email gateway and the web gateway and targeting your endpoints. So if you want to test for those, you can test for them straight away. Uh, you know, really important examples where I scroll down here. Um, some of them are very specific things like this particular piece of malware that's been used targeting Australian organizations. But you're also going to get things like maze ransomware variants, the latest variants of Soden and Kiwi that cause travel X problems. Uh, and if we scroll down far enough, you're going to start seeing uh, elements of Black Lives Matter, COVID-19. Uh, there's Mac ones in here. So it's a really very, very comprehensive. There's the snake one that targeted Honda, for example. So very, very powerful uh, alerts. On the left hand side of the screen is where we're going to be uh, running the assessments and viewing the reports. But before we do that, I did want to show you two elements of housekeeping. The first is in terms of integrations. This is something that is really, really important when you start thinking about testing your security controls, because nothing really runs in isolation. If you are running vulnerability scanners and you often get vulnerability scanning reports and you don't know where to start with all of the CVEs that are listed, um, we can help you with that. If you run SIEM tools and you want greater visibility of how things are operating, we can help with that. If you're running antivirus and EDR tools and you need help to improve the detection rates of those EDR uh, platforms, we can help with that too. And that's through integration. So with vulnerability scanning tools, 
we know which exploits can successfully target your business. They know which vulnerabilities you have um, open on your devices. We can interrogate vulnerability scanning logs and say, this exploit would leverage these uh, vulnerabilities and these vulnerabilities appear on the following list of affected machines. So if you want to prioritize your mitigation for uh, vulnerabilities, um, it's a perfect way to, to give you that, that greater level of understanding and, and prioritization. With Seam Tools, the platform gives you the ability to pass information across the Seam Tool and identify what's going on in real time. It's also powerful for doing things like SOC analysis. So if you have a third party SOC or an internal SOC, doesn't really matter, and you want to see how well it's working, is it detecting latest exploits? Well, if you're running simulations, there should be an awful lot of red flashing lights in that SOC department. And if there isn't, then potentially something's gone wrong. And then with EDR tools, uh, we have integrations with things like ATP, Sentinel-1, Carbon Black, you name it basically. Um, but we have an API approach as well, so any standard uh, platform we can work with. And what we're going to do there is if we're able to get malware to install a run and endpoint, we can pass our log file into one of those EDR solutions, and that feedback can be used then to fine tune your configurations of the EDR tool. So integration is very, very important. The other thing to mention before I show you the workflow is that this is a fully multi-tenanted and multi-site platform. And that's important for a couple of reasons. The first is if you are an organization with multiple sites and you would like to test where are the weakest links in my chain, uh, you can do that from the comfort of your office. And you can do that by pushing our agent, which is basically an, an MSI, uh, to each of the branch sites you want to test. And then you can actually switch user, run on that environment and test their controls individually. Multi-tenant is important because managed service providers and, and certainly the, the, the team at ACS 365 would have the ability to potentially run these uh, assessments on your behalf as a managed service. So if on the other end of the scale, you're a smaller organization, or you have smaller budgets or limited resource, there is an option then to be running this with a third party uh, as ACS 365 and have them actually agree terms on how often to run assessments for you and then provide you with the reports and the remediation advice. So it's going to cater to organizations of all size and complexity. So um, let's talk through how the platform actually works then. So to do that, we're going to use the email example. So to run an email assessment, we choose the email gateway on the left hand side and select the assessment option. Once this screen loads up in the middle of the screen we're going to see a range of templates these are the ones that are really pre-canned in the platform they come as standard with the solution and what we're going to see here is things that everyone's familiar with ransomware malware payloads for example but we also see a template called best practices uh, and that in in real life use cases is where everyone starts because if you choose the best practice template in any of the modules that's the one that's going to throw every single exploit command technique whatever it may be in that module at that particular security control. So in this case, by choosing it, we are gonna send up to about 15 and a half to 16,000 simulated email exploits across all of these types, targeting that inbox to see what lands. So it's a really powerful and easy way of benchmarking how effective your email gateway is working, what it's good at, and maybe where it's, where it's uh, falling short. The logic being that if you run a benchmarking test like that, and it comes back saying you're doing pretty well, but you've got a real blind spot with office payloads, then you could mitigate or remediate those issues with office payloads. And when you come to do your retest, rather than launching best practices again, you could just use the office payload template and rather than 16,000 emails, it's gonna send up here just less than 4,000 and take about one hour to complete. Now the duration of the test is pretty irrelevant to you because it all runs in background mode as a system. So it's not an hour of your time that's being taken up. But ultimately over time, as you fine tune your testing, uh, um, your, your amount of time with the assessments running comes down dramatically. To run the assessment, you choose the model, the, the assessment uh, template that you want. You choose the inbox uh, of the device where the agent's running and you click launch. And you're now basically an ethical hacker. Um, without any testing or any training, uh, this is all you basically need to run benchmark assessments. Now, obviously, if you want to do something more complex, you need to take time to think about what you want to launch and why. But this is designed not to introduce huge amounts of complexity and in management into your, into your network. 
If you want to schedule the frequency, you can choose it from the scheduler here, once a day, once a week, once a month, once a quarter. And once you've saved that, we will launch this template on that frequency and then you will get an email alert with the report attachment uh, whenever that assessment completes. So designed to be very simple. Now you will see in every single one of the modules a new template button. That is designed to give you ultimate customization and flexibility. I'm not going to take you through that process now for the interest of time, but if I scroll to the right with these templates, you'll start seeing some colored ones. And these colored ones are basically uh, templates. So in this case, someone called Roberto has built their own template a year ago. Um, and that may well have just been, they wanted to test for a very specific type of office payload or a very specific type of malicious behavior. Or can, as can exploits be delivered in files that have been nested three times, for example. So you can build your own templates if you wish to do so, but the pre-can templates are comprehensive. So let's assume we've run the best practice test and we've got this score on the screen of 96 out of 100. Now I would never typically see a score that high in, in, in the wild. Um, this is my demo lab, so the scores are obviously um, inflated because there's a lack of security in this, in this environment. But let's assume that's my score, 96 out of 100. Why is it so bad? So I'm going to go to the reports tab at the bottom of the screen. And now I have uh, on screen a, a view of all of the different security controls and the ability to run a full report. So if I choose the email gateway and click on full report, what I now see is a couple of things. Across the top of the screen are some, I guess, some sort of widgets, management widgets that give you top level information. These are things we are most and least vulnerable to. Not particularly useful for, for the technical audience out there, but what is useful is the, the content in the middle, because what this is showing us is every individual component that was part of that best practice test is showing us the penetration ratio, it's showing us the, the impact risk, it's showing us the number of penetrated files. So I have a particular concern about ransomware in this case. So if I click on ransomware, this is where phase two of using the platform comes in. This is about remediation. So now what we see, if I keep scrolling down, it's gonna auto populate and keep filling. Uh, this is a list of every single piece of ransomware that was successfully delivered into the organization. Now, when I actually um, identify one of these and select it, if I just close down my, um, uh, zoom uh, icon. Um, on the right hand side of the screen, I get the information I need to decide what to do about it. So I have a description. So in this case, what it's telling us is this was an old version word format file that had an embedded macro that when it was enabled by the user ran and started encrypting a particular file that was nested in a .html file. So that's a description of how it was able to, to, to traverse my email gateway, but underneath that, I get the mitigation advice. And what this is telling us is really, in this case, is two things. The first is, if as a business, you know that you do not need HTML files being delivered via email, then you should really configure a policy to block them at the gateway. And if you wish to do that, here is the string at the bottom that you could use to block them in your policy engine. And then you are done. You shouldn't be targeted or having HTML files delivered into your user inboxes moving forward. If, however, you do need them, or more likely you're not sure whether you need them or not, uh, it looks like any controls you have in place for sandboxing or for content disarm and reconstruction, CDR, uh, don't look as though they've been configured stringently enough. So it may be a case that you've got the, fu the functionality in your, your email gateway license, but you haven't enabled it or you haven't configured it strongly enough. So if you want to manage you know, files through gray area, that's where you would need to do it. That's mitigation. In this case, mitigation for, ran for ransomware is relatively basic. So this advice is relatively basic. But when you start looking at endpoint testing, um, lateral movement testing, this contextual information can become very comprehensive. Now, the challenge will be if you get that many red flashing lights or red shields in this case, where do you start? Everyone's got alert fatigue. Uh, we just don't have the bandwidth to deal with it. Where do we start? So across the top of the screen, you have what I uh, call very grandly um, a prioritization. It's basically a set of filters uh, that allow you to focus your concerns. So for, rather than worrying about everything, let's focus on the attacks that had the high impact probability. Let's focus on those that had specific file extensions because on our email gateway, we, were, we actually thought we were blocking these. So how on earth did they get through? Let's focus on those that were nested X number of times. 
And all of a sudden you've taken, in this case, 1,830 ransomware examples uh, down to about the top 55. You can export this as a CSV file. You can sort or filter it by the, the mitigation advice and your technical team or ACS 365 can then be helping you to remediate those issues immediately. And all of a sudden, your 55 biggest concern attacks have, have, have disappeared and your risk score is gonna come down proportionally. That's how the system is used from a mitigation or remediation perspective. That then rolls up into reporting. So I'll, I'll sign off by showing you really two reports. The first of those is the report specific to that particular module. So every module or every assessment you run has its own report. So this is the email gateway report. It's only six pages, including the header, but this is designed to give you, I would say, as plain English report as you're gonna get in cybersecurity, which gives you the ability to articulate as much of this as you feel comfortable with to a management team or a board. So on the first page, it's showing us top level information. This is our risk. Everyone loves risk scores because it's quantifiable and it allows people with budget powers or decision-making abilities to make decisions based on something meaningful. It's also going to show you what you are most and least vulnerable to. Now, obviously, in this case, everything's red. Uh, but if things were, if your email gateway in this case was performing well against some of these, those lines would be green. That's great. We as Simulator have no vested interest in whether these are performing badly. Uh, we're just giving you a system generated view on how effective they are operating. The next page is going to give you insights. I would argue probably a bit too much information for a management team meeting, but if you have someone on the technical team who's interested, it gives you a gateway then to really talking at a, a, another level of detail. But the next two pages, really powerful. The first one is this, which gives you the ability to benchmark your organization against all organizations using our platform or specifically organizations in the same vertical as you using the platform. So if as a business you like to compare and contrast, you have the ability, it's optional and it's anonymized. So you don't have to do it whatsoever at all. I would argue more powerful still is performance over time. This is where as a security head or as, as an IT head, as the person accountable for security, this gives you now the ability to articulate what before you were kind of speculating about. So in this example, what we're seeing is one, two, three, four, five lines going on a downward trend. That's awesome. These are individual components of the email gateway security that are coming down. So that could be oh, Mr. and Mrs. Board Director, since we invested in email gateway A, uh, we've seen a significant uh, reduction in our risk profile for all of the major attack types, except one. So one of these lines is going up. Why? Well, that relates to ransomware. And the reason we think that's going up is because since working from home for the last four months, there's been a significant increase in COVID-19, Black Lives Matter, et cetera, et cetera, phishing and ransomware attacks. You've probably seen about it in, in the news yourselves, haven't you? So that's why we're, we're, we're being targeted by and seeing an upward trend. Our recommendation as your IT head is that we enable the ransomware protection module within our email gateway, or that we spend a couple of days of consultancy time with ACS 365 to help us with our configurations. This is the cost. This is the potential risk if we don't do it, what, what do you say? So again, this is real time or regular, more frequent visibility of how well you're doing and therefore giving you the ability to articulate that and use it for justification for doing the right things to get the, 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 the company as secure as it can be. Associated with that is this page, which again, I think is really important because again, it gives you credibility if you're in a security role because you're not going to the board and saying, we need to buy another email gateway. We need to buy another security control because normally the response will be no, or it'll be why followed by no, because it can't be validated. What this is showing is actually, look, we've run some tests on what we've got. And actually in this case, we could reduce our risk score by 60 points. So almost two thirds, just by blocking these non-essential file types of the gateway. Now, based on your line of business, you might require .pub files, for example. So in that case, don't block it. But if you blocked 50% of these, your risk score is still going to come down significantly. So you're not going to the board with a begging bowl and saying, I think we need something. What you're actually saying is, this is what we could do, but we might need to invest in this module or uh, an add-on solution. And a good example of that would be sandboxing and CDR, content disarmament reconstruction. In this case, what our report is saying to us is, based on the testing, it doesn't look as though these controls are in place. And if they are in place, they haven't been configured effectively enough. 
So as a business, again, you can go back and say, we need to invest in that sandboxing module and here's the reasons why. The final page on the reports is always uh, given over to this information. For any sort of naysayers out there who question how it works, this gives you the, the three frameworks we use to generate the risk score. So you can see how quantifiable and referenceable it is. And it also shows you how we categorize risk scores in, on the home page on the dashboard into the low, medium and high risk categories. It's a bit like um, someone mentioned it to me the other day as like gamification of security. You get a score and if you are con generally concerned about security, you are going to go really hell for leather to try and get that score down to an acceptable level for your business. Um, that score might be zero or one if you're really, really uh, motivated by it. Most customers will take a look and think after a few months of doing this, I think a realistic score for our business is 15, 20, whatever it may be. And then they'll set that as a target. And then when they get to that target score, they will baseline it. And then the system will generate less alerts and less concern, less reports, if you like, unless or until the score goes above that, that baseline score again. The final thing I'll leave you with is the top level executive, executive report. And the reason I want to show you this is because of this page here. This is a report that is going to give you a summary of all of the controls that you've tested. And then it's going to give you, it give you a picture or a depiction of the kill chain with the scores of your security controls in context. So if you want a way to go to the board and actually really contextualize security for the business, this is a great way to do it. So in this case, what we're saying is our email gateway is terrible. You know, there's a, uh, and again, I would see probably the inverse of this in most organizations uh, today, but uh, if we just take this workflow, our email gateway is operating terribly. We have a risk score that's, that's extremely high. And what that means, uh, uh, colleagues, is that uh, if we are targeted via email exploits, they are absolutely going to land in user inboxes. And as we know, 75% of attacks start with an email, so we have a massive problem. But not in isolation. Let's follow the workflow. So if uh, emails get e malicious emails landing in their inboxes, if someone, you know, will someone interact with them? Well, the typical answer is someone will because our phishing awareness score is about average. So someone in the company is going to click on something at some stage. And that's a concern because our endpoint security is kind of running at just above, uh, just above average capability. So there's a high probability that if malware is interacted with, it's going to have the ability to install and do something. And that's a concern because as a business, we haven't yet invested in lateral movement controls, privileged access management, password vaulting. And so if malware installs and runs, it's going to move for absolutely for certain. So as your head of IT, as your security responsible, whatever your role is, it is my recommendation to the board that we carry out the following three activities and we do it within the next three months. Would you agree? And if the board doesn't agree, then they can't really have any arguments if something bad happens and they end up having to, to, to report to the press or deal with the regulators because they've been given the information in very clear format. And you as a security responsible have the ability to say, we did everything we could, we've covered our bases, uh, we've got peace of mind that we're testing as effectively as we can, the business will make its decisions based on budgets and other factors, but we have given this information as clearly as we can. And the final thing that that leads into is performance over time for all of your controls. So in this case, it's, a, it's not particularly clear. I'll zoom in a little bit. But uh, what we're showing here is your current results or your trends for all of your controls. So again, if these were all downward trends, you can then turn around and say, you know, we invested our money uh, and your security team took that seriously. We have got maximum value out of the controls. We've improved our security posture. So, you know, increasingly I hear, I hear, um, technical decision makers that I speak to saying I've been told that I have to demonstrate greater value of the licenses we bought last year before I go and spend more money that that's frustrating and challenging for everyone but ultimately it's it's a, it's a fair point if we're if we've got shelfware in the organization why go and spend more money on stuff that we may maybe not going to have the bandwidth to use so being able to demonstrate effective use of the controls that we have and identify how where they're running is a real powerful output from this uh, this platform um, that's everything I wanted to go through at this stage. Uh, obviously, there are uh, a number of modules. They all follow the same workflow. So when you know how to run one, they, they, they all should flow. There's always some challenges or some complexities with things like lateral movement, because that's more, it's, it's less trivial than sending an email. 
but ultimately it follows a very similar flow. So hopefully that gives you a flavor for how a system-based approach and more consistent security control validation testing is gonna give you more regular confidence that you are as secure as you can be and give you the recommendations and tools that you need to improve the security of your business on a frequency of your choosing. Um, at that stage, I'll hand back over to Aid from ACS365 uh, to just uh, see if there's any questions and, and round off the session if necessary. Thanks, Tim. Um, so guys, a um, lot of information there. Uh, I think as you can see, it provides Simulate can provide an enormous amount of data uh, in real time to, to help businesses to make uh, correct decisions around their security rather than trying to guess it sometimes, which I think clearly happens. So um, phenomenal amount of data. Um, I'm just looking if there's any questions. Don't seem to be any questions at the moment, Tim. Um, so we'll just start. I'll keep checking it just for a couple of minutes while I'm talking. So um, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, um, this will be available, it's been recorded, will be available uh, on our website just once it's been top and tailed and, and edited, so it should be up very quickly. Um, if you've got any questions at all um, after we finish, please uh, just get in touch with your, 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 your partner at uh, ACS, whoever looks after you, um, and we will attempt to get back to you and answer any questions that you may have. So. Um, Stephen's just put as well, no questions, so very insightful. So thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, I thought so too, you know, massive amount of information, um, really, really fantastic product. So please get in touch with us if you want any help. Um, I don't think there's anything else from me apart from um, please look at it at the website. And if you've got any questions, get in touch with us. And thank you again, Simulate, for your time this morning. That's great. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Guys. Thanks guys.